morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, I want to apologize. We had some prompt for we had some callers uh, called in. Unfortunately, we were having some trouble with the phone. We got it fixed, so please call us back, and I'll get you on uh, and uh, answer any questions you might have. In fact, let's, uh, there's the number on the screen, 737 plus. 615-737-7587 if you'd like to call in and uh, if you've got any questions regarding investing, financial planning, retirement, whatever it might be, um, we'll be a, we'll, I'll do the best I can to help you with that, okay? Now back to, I was talking about target date funds, one of those, uh, you know, area that's kind of like a default for people that, you know, I don't know what to invest in, I don't know which fund I should take. Or maybe all these funds look horrible. <laughs> I don't want to do any of them. And so the default is the target day funds. Now I'm going to give you some history here. And this has come uh, from Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins wrote a book called uh, Money Master the Game, um, Seven Simple Steps to Financial Freedom. Sounds familiar, right? Uh, <laughs> one of the things that he got into that I thought was really good was his research on uh, annuities. And one of the things that... Um, there's a gentleman by the name of uh, David Babel, Professor David Babel with uh, Wharton School of Finance, and he participated in a study that talked about real-world index annuities uh, in the stock market and was comparing index annuity returns and how they did relative to the S&P and then relative to the S&P and Treasuries. Great study uh, with real numbers. It was the first one of its kind. It came out a few years ago uh, and showed Interestingly enough, how index annuities, real world, again, these are actual, these weren't hypotheticals, these weren't back tested products. Uh, this was, again, uh, actual index annuities that were out in the marketplace at the time. And it showed that compared to the SP 500, and it showed that the index annuities had a return uh, that outperformed the SP. 500 index 67% of the time. Now if you think about that, the S&P 500 outperforms 96% of mutual funds. So the fact that you've got something like that two-thirds of the time that these index annuities were outperformed was, was pretty impressive. Uh, not to say you should move everything over there, don't get me wrong, I'm going to get into this in a lot more detail. However, the next thing they thought, well, no one invests 100% in the stocks, or at least not many. They're going to usually do some mix. So they said, well, why don't we put treasuries blended together with uh, you know those fixed accounts blended together with S&P 500 index and see how that did. And now the, the uh, index annuities outperform that like 80 some percent of the time. So now all of a sudden, wow, eight out of 10 times you're gonna do better with an index annuity over the last 20 years than, in, uh, than in the market. That's, that's pretty crazy. Now, that was a few years ago, so the market's had some pretty good years since then, and I'm expecting that's more like a 50-50 kind of a deal. But here's the real news. The real news isn't like I should choose one over the other. The real news is the study that came out since then, which showed that if you blended together stocks and bonds, what's the likelihood of running out of money? And then it compared other things. It said, well, what other asset categories could we blend together to get the best uh, opportunity to not run out of money? In other words, that we would be able to get the most in terms of income Income and the least risk in terms of running out of money. And they found actually that blending together stocks and index annuities, ah, what a concept, right? Put them together in a portfolio and that gave you the best success for guaranteed income, for best growth, for never running out of money and having the, uh, being able to attain and maintain your standard living and quality of life no matter how long you might live, all right? So we're gonna talk about both of those things. And this is one of the things, you know, you may not realize, like Ben Bernanke, for, former Federal um, uh, Reserve Chairman, yeah, he, most of his portfolios disclosed when uh, he was chairman back in 08 was in uh, annuities, all right? And we find other people that find the same. So I talked about, um, there's, you'll see new in the news things about annuities where they really tear them down and they say, oh, annuities are terrible. Or you might see an ad, uh, Ken Fisher puts one out. I hate annuities, okay? Well, think about this. Uh, you know, if you read down the first paragraph, he, he makes it pretty clear what he hates is, uh, he says some fixed annuities are okay, Right? I hate variable annuities. Okay, well, you're going to find a lot of consensus on that part. And this is one of the things I've talked about many times. But keep in mind, too, the guy that hates annuities is trying to sell you on his ability to pick stocks and come invest with me, and I'll do some stock picking for you, right? And I'm going to make you more money. Well, the reality is, and this is straight from Tony uh, Robbins' book, because he did the same thing when he looked at that ad and, and delved into it, that the, he was ready to sell you his expert stock pickings, of course, for a fee, and it's a pretty hefty fee. It's, I believe it's around 2% or more a year. What's not mentioned in the bold print of the ad is that the, excuse me, what they, 
also don't talk about is the fact that people like experts, in fact, like Warren Buffett, Jack Bogle, Ray Dalio, David Swinson, these are all some of the best uh, investors out there, uh, both in terms of pension funds as well as individual investors. Of course, Jack Bogle, the founder of uh, Vanguard Funds, uh, as well as all the academic research, and I talk about it each week here when we're comparing things on the market, uh, many times I've got into the academic research of how to design a portfolio. All of that shows that passive management works better than stock picking. All right, so first off, you gotta you know, take it with a grain of thaw, uh, salt rather when you see those things. The other things is, when you uh, and when we're looking at annuities, is we're going to talk about more about those later in the show, and I'll get into more about the good, bad, and ugly of those, and what kinds of things you want to look for. Uh, there's about a thousand different products. We can narrow it down to about 25 or 30. That's going to give you the best results, all right? And that's the key. We're looking for the best of the best, right? So, one of the things I'm going to recap real quickly through the market part of it first, though. So you might recall in a, in a recent show, one of the things I talked about was, as we just went over the three worlds, if you're investing in the stock market to stay ahead of, in, uh, of inflation uh, and, and taxes uh, and still get some return so you're not losing the purchasing power of your dollars. So let's take a look at what the average investor, remember I said the S&P 500, Standard Poor 500 Index, that's the 500 biggest companies in the United States, outperforms 96% of equity mutual funds. And take a look at this graph. You can see those, the, the green and the red, right? Well, the green is the S&P 500 Index. This goes from 2000 through 2014. The la over the last 15 years, you can see the S&P, and in the red, that's the average equity mutual fund investor. Right? That's that person that you've got your money in that IRA, that 401k, and you're not sure what funds, or you're in a target date fund. Guess what? That's you in the red. Okay? And those green, that's just if you just went with the S&P 500 index, look how much better you would have done year in and year out. All right, let's take a look at the next slide. To put that even clearer, this is another one. Dalbar is the one that puts out this research. Okay, it's an independent research group. Uh, they're not affiliated with any, you know, industry or anything, they're completely independent. And what they do is they look at investor behavior and investor returns. And as you can see now, that if, you, if your mind, if your eyes kind of glaze over anytime you see a spreadsheet, bear with me. If you just look at the bottom of the page over the 12-month period, this is 2014, this is last year, and it shows that equity mutual funds average 5.5%. It should, and then if we're moving to the, le to the right, rather, from the left, asset allocation funds, 2.24%, fixed income funds, 1.16%, the composite fund investor putting it all together at 3.98%, okay, maybe comparable, your asset allocation funds, that's going to be comparable at target date fund, right? So somewhere between, let's say, 2 and 3%. Now you look over at the S&P 500 that year, 13.69% return. And look at the uh, Ag Barclays Aggregate Bond Index all the way to the right. So that's the bond index, similar to the S&P is with stocks. This is on bonds, and it did 5.97. So if we compare fixed income funds at 1.16 to the aggregate bond at 5.9, see how the indexes so outperform the uh, average investor, the mutual funds that are out there because of the fees in that. Let's keep going over through the, the next slide. This shows just a dollar amount. What we're looking for is a negative correlation. I've covered this in, in a recent show, so I'm going to move through this quickly to the next slide. So the next slide is this is what we're looking at, the Markowitz Efficient Frontier. Okay, Harry Markowitz won the Nobel Prize back in 1990. For and this is what he, uh, this is about his equity research in developing the efficient frontier, showing that asset allocation can allow you to get a better return. Okay, a modern portfolio, 50-50 stocks and bonds as an example, would give you a return comparable to the S&P, but with half the risk. All right, so we're going to take a break, and when we come back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that in reality. I'm going to show you a portfolio design that does what, the, what Dr. Markowitz found back in 1990 and further work that developed this, this model with Dr. Fama, who won the Pro Nobel Prize in 2013. So I'm going to go through that quickly, and then I'm getting right back into annuities. 
I, a lot of times clients come in and they either are not familiar with annuities or maybe they've heard negative things or they're just not sure. Or, so we're going to get rid of all the myths out there and there, there's a lot of minefields, if you will, a lot of traps that you want to avoid that could cost you dearly. I'm going to help you with that this morning. So join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.